So the multiverse tournament is the next stage in Dragon Ball Super, and it is going to be huge. There's 10 fighters from each universe, there's 12 universes, that's 120 people competing in this tournament. And just a quick breakdown for those of you who haven't been following Dragon Ball Super and may not know what's going on, there are 12 universes. Each universe has chosen 10 of its most strongest fighters, supposedly. If all of those fighters are knocked out, then that entire universe gets destroyed. So you would think that each fighter has to be the strongest of their universe, and that's what I want to talk about today. Right now, we only know Universe 7's team. We probably have a good idea of what Universe 6's team's gonna be, maybe Hit, Megeta, Kaba, and a few others, but Universe 7's team is set in stone. This is everyone on the team. They really did go all out with this because they even brought back Android 17. There is a few weird ones though, like Master Roshi, Krillin could be questionable. I do think they made the right choice with Android 17 and 18, but even someone like Tien who trains every day, I'm not sure how he's going to compete with some of these other guys in different universes. So what I'm going to be doing is looking over the ideal Universe 7 team. This is what I think the ideal team, if you want to go by strength, should be. Now there's a lot of ways you could approach this. For example, you could have someone like Majin Buu absorb Goku, and that could count as one person. But to keep it somewhat fair, that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, these are all their own characters. Because honestly, like any other tournament, I don't think fusion would be allowed. Starting things off, for me, there's three characters who are set in stone, and that is Goku, Vegeta, and Majin Buu. These are the top three strongest fighters in Universe 7. We don't know what Gohan's been up to. He may have been training and may have surpassed Majin Buu, but right now he's in fourth. If you go back and look at the entire Dragon Ball series, there's a lot of characters who could have been in this team, but they're either dead or in a movie. I'm absolutely positive that someone like Cell would have complied to these tournament rules if he knew that the stake of the universe was on the line. Even Frieza. If we see Frost from Universe 6 again, then I'm sure if Frieza was alive, he would be in the tournament. The list of people who are alive and would actually be able to compete and maybe do something is actually not that high. The only people who I've been able to think of were Mercenary Tao, Yamcha, Trunks, and Goten. I thought of Tao because he's kind of like the Universe 7's version of Hit. Even though Hit is a million times stronger, not even an exaggeration, Tao was seen last in Dragon Ball Z, and he's not absolutely evil. He is a bad guy, but I'm sure if anything happened to Roshi, he would be a good replacement because they're around the same level of power. I thought of Yamcha because obviously it's Yamcha, but the two big ones are Goten and Trunks. They are clearly stronger than Roshi and Krillin, but the only reason I can think of them not being added in the tournament is because they're too young. Think back to the last Last tournament they were in. They weren't even allowed to compete with the adults because they're like 8 years old. But even with that said, they are Super Saiyans and are sure as hell stronger than Roshi and Krillin combined. I can understand if Goku and Vegeta left them at home because if they lost, they wouldn't want them to have the guilt of the entire universe being destroyed. Hypothetically though, if it was a few years in the future and they allowed a fusion, undoubtedly Gotenks would be there. The next set of characters are the guys over in Otherworld. We're talking about your Olibus, your Pycons, especially this guy. A lot of these guys are very strong, but there's two very common problems. One, they're dead, and they've been dead for their entire Dragon Ball career. And two, they weren't in Toriyama's manga. I don't think that matters too much because Dragon Ball Super has shown guys like Gregory. But if we're talking about the strongest characters in Universe 7, without a doubt, Pycon has to be there. A lot of people like to compare him to Piccolo because they're both green and they look kind of Namekian-ish. In fact, a common theory is that Pycon is an ancient Namekian. Unfortunately, he is dead, and I don't see him as the type of character to get revived, but if he was alive, 100%, he would be in this tournament. With all that said, this is the strongest legal Universe 7 team that could exist. You would have to go to a little bit of trouble to revive Pycon, but other than that, it looks pretty unstoppable. So this is the team that makes sense and could theoretically exist in the series. It's still not the strongest team to have ever come out of Universe 7, but it's still pretty good. I want to take it back to this, the original Universe Universe 7 team, the team that's actually going to be fighting in the tournament. Now, we don't know how far away this tournament is. We don't know if there's going to be a one-year time skip, a two-year time skip, or if it could happen next week. And the reason that's so important is because in a year's time, the power scale of all these characters could be completely different. Vegeta could be stronger than Goku. Gohan could be stronger than Buu. So until we know anything else, we should look at them as we see them now. Goku should be the strongest, realistically and logically. Vegeta would come in second unless he had some incredible training by Whis. Majin Buu would come in after that, then if he doesn't decrease any more and stays as he is right now, it's Gohan, Piccolo, 17, 18, Tien, Krillin, Roshi. That is them ranked in how powerful they are. Not fighting abilities, techniques, or even endurance, just pure power levels. 
In terms of usefulness, it could be completely different. Majin Buu is one of the strongest there, but there's a good chance that it'll fall asleep, so it's 50-50. Anyway, that has been the strongest Universe 7 team. Personality-wise, everyone there is golden. I don't know if it was purposely designed like this, but they're all fit to work really well with each other. So yeah, personality-wise, I wouldn't touch it, but in terms of strength, it could definitely use some fixing. Regardless, I want to thank you so much for watching, and until we meet again, I will see you in the next Dragon Ball video.